What a crew we have tonight. Thank you all so much for coming. I'm really in awe when I look around the room and I see so many families affected by food allergies and I see friends of those families. And then I look around and I see so many change makers in our audience tonight. You just saw the PSA that BBDO did for us for nothing. We did that we did that PSA. Thanks to BBDO who did the PSA, NCM and Podi who helped us distribute it, our PR team who helped us get on the Today Show with it, and social media response. Your money goes to research, but thanks to partners like those and change makers like those who believe in this mission, we're able to do things like that for zero dollars. And I'm looking around the room and I see Evan Edwards here, who grew up with food allergies, had a big EpiPen, roughly the size of this microphone, and said, I'm not going to carry that. I probably won't carry it. You probably didn't carry it as often as you should have. So he decided to create a new one that could fit in your back pocket and talk to you when you administered and kept you calm. And it was five seconds. Now it's two seconds. And it saved my daughter's life. And so it's people like that who care, who are making a big difference. And then there are Eat Angels, Mike Weinbach and Kristen Lemkow. Who decided that this message needed to go out and got us and a researcher in front of 3,000 J.P. Morgan Chase employees, all who are affected. And then Carrie Hallio, who's at Goldman Sachs, and did the same thing, brought us in, and the response was off the charts. One of their most, most well-attended wellness sessions ever. The Daltons are here, and they're trying to help make uh, safe snacks for our kids and our families. And through the skin of their teeth, they're doing that in New Hampshire and distributing it. We've got J.J. Volupas in college trying to help with social-emotional issues with food allergies because he believes we should live in a world of can because all these kids here is what they can't do. You can't go to that sleepover. You can't kiss that boy. You don't know what he ate. You can't go to camp, we can't keep you safe, we can't do a lot of things. But JJ's decided to help kids with these anxieties by saying, well, so let's focus on everything that you can do. And that's huge for those of us that live with it. So thank you, JJ, and he's in college, by the way. <laughs> Abby's here and she's developing a device that you wear around your neck, you stick Take a little thing out of the necklace, stick it in your food, and it tells you if your allergen's in your food. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> pretty awesome. And the Debs are here, the red shoes, the red sneakers, and they are bringing awareness to food allergies, and they are making a huge difference. We honored them last year. And it reminds me of an article I read called Audacious Philanthropy. And the, the crux of the article was that making change, like swing for the fences kind of change, is really hard. Obviously, right? But what was important was, it struck me, was it said, can you think about who funded Jonas Salk, who invented the, the vaccine for polio? Can you think about who was responsible for getting car seats in cars? Can you remember who funded, or who was the funder, or who developed the protocol for CPR training that is now widespread? Can you remember who got hospice care now in the mainstream? I couldn't think of any of them. Because it's a huge collaboration. Making change is hard, and it takes a village, and it takes a dedicated village, and it takes everyone working together. Because you can never name the senator, or the nonprofit, or the philanthropist that made any one thing happen. 
So it's our job at EAT to work with all of those other organizations that are here tonight and efforts so that we can all make change together because that's the only way it's going to happen. And we're so grateful to all of you for being here and for helping us do that tonight. Tonight, we have a new entrant to the food allergy mission. It's called Elijah's Echo, and its founder is Thomas and Dina Silvera. And I would like to invite Thomas up to share his story with you all right now. All right. I guess today is no comedy. Um, <laughs> so, you know, at least thank you everyone from EATS for allowing me to be here and basically share my story and the initiative that my wife and I are about to embark on. And I'm going to start off with just a couple of phrases that my son, those, these were the words that he said to me before I went off to work. And to me, those are his last words. So he said, make a hand, make a hug, make a kiss. As I put him in his car seat, closed the door, went to work, get a phone call. You know, and something like that is like, it's not something you want to hear. So I rush, get to the hospital. That was that. That's the short version. If I get too deep, I'll start crying, and then I make everybody cry. And then, but um, the whole, the reason why I'm standing here, the reason why everybody is here, is for us to make a difference. We're working on Elijah's Echo, and the initiative for Elijah's Echo is to create the awareness for everyone, for those who don't understand what the severe allergies are or what it is. It's like. We all have like that small little information, but we need a broader spectrum of the information. You know, we know people, hey, they have a peanut allergy. Yeah, that's cool. No, it's not cool. You know, it's not, it's very severe. The smallest little of a molecule can change the person's life for, it could be for death, or it can actually just change them, you know, detrimentally for the rest of their life. Elijah's Echo, the initiative is for us to to go into inner city schools and you know, go into wherever it is that the information is not there, is to bring it to them. And where my son was at, the information was supposedly there, but it wasn't. So the thing is, it's like we need to basically, it's like know the signs, treat the symptoms, and create the awareness. And most importantly, find a cure. And I know everybody here we're not just here to have an amazing meal, to drink some nice wine. We are here to support each other on a mission that is becoming a broader spectrum than, faster than anything that I can even imagine. But it's becoming unnoticed from a lot of other people. So hopefully my word, the work that I'm doing, the work that the Debs are doing, and everybody else that is here that are doing will change the minds of those who don't understand and make it more prevalent and put it in the forefront of what this community, as it seems as it's small, but it's a very big community. It's a, to me, I call it the silent killer. Because it, all it does is take is one little bite. One little bite changes is everything. So again, um, Elijah's Echo and the Elijah Alavi Foundation is in works. My wife and I is working very hard, um, just trying to get everything together. And that is our mission, and your mission is to bring everybody together. You know, it's not just a separate of communities in the industry. It should be formed as an alliance. And the alliance is what we need, not a separation. So, thank you. Awesome. Awesome. You're the best. So the Silveras are here, not by choice, but tragedy brought them here. Many of us who are here are here because we've had an experience or have fear of that tragedy happening. And our next speaker um, is someone who had that happen. 
Robin O'Brien, uh, 12 years ago, fed her youngest child uh, eggs and yogurt, and her daughter went into anaphylaxis. And Robin O'Brien said, wait, what? Trace of food can do that to a child right in front of me? So Robin, being a Wall Street analyst for the food industry, went back and said, that, what's going on? And she did all the analysis, and she shook the country by asking a very simple question. Are we allergic to our food, or are we allergic to what's been done to it? Food now is not what food was, and maybe it's what's happened to it. And isn't it funny that the rate of food allergies is commensurate with the rate of pesticides, GMOs, processed, you know, artificial ingredients, et cetera. So Robin took that on. And Robin has a way of asking very simple questions that make an enormous impact. She asked a very simple question. How come people can't get a life-saving device for under $600 each? And Ro it's the only one on the marketplace, and you have people who can't afford it who are captive, and that's not okay. So thanks to Robin, who asked that very simple question, started a movement, and the CEO of Milan showed up to Congress to testify with why that should be possible. Robin has done the same thing with organic food. Well, it's not really organic, it's what we used to call food. And now that the demand's going up, how come only 1% of our farmland is for organic farming? There must be something with our system if we can't feed this, don't have the supply to meet the demand. What's going on? Again, a simple question that rocked the industry. But here's the thing about Robin, which is why she is uh, someone who I have had um, a massive crush on from afar for years. <laughs> Her, the reason she does this is for the health of our children. As she says over and over, there are 30% of our population and 100% of our future. And she does everything tirelessly. And I've only given a few examples, by the way. And I'm so proud to introduce her and give her an award. And at EAT, we don't give standard awards. We give very personal ones. So tonight, we're gonna give Robin a very personal necklace that has the names of all four of her children on it so that she can wear it and be remembered that everything she does is motivated by her children and the huge impact she's doing is doing for those children and for all of ours here. So please join me in thanking Robin and introducing her to you tonight. Thank you. 